I am just a devil with love to spare. So, Viva Las Vegas! Viva! Guess what? I volunteered the whole class to work on the fundraiser. Huh? Isn't that exciting? Yes, sister. All right, thank you very much, buddy. Now, here is something you newbies should know, okay? Fundraisers are very, very, very important in the history and background of the Catholic Church. I mean, bingo. The classic thing you think of is bingo, right? It's a huge tool we use to raise money for the parish. Cookie sales, candy sales, bake sales, car washes, spaghetti dinners, right? right? These are all ways we've gotten together to raise money and have fun together as parishioners, members of the same community, members of the same parish. So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, okay? And we are going to what I believe is the highest level of fundraising, and that tool is called the Lost Vegas night, huh? Just the sound of it alone makes you want to get out your wallet and have some fun, doesn't it? All right, now let's spell Las Vegas, class. L All right, girls, hey, girls, girls, talking chatties. This is the international sign for I'm talking to my neighbor, just so you know. This is not the shield of invisibility, all right? I can see your whole face. And if you two keep it up, I'm going to separate you, understand? <laughs> Las Vegas class in Spanish means the fertile plain, okay, which is no understatement, okay, because the rule of the casino is what? The house always wins. That's why it makes for a good fundraiser, get it? St. Bruno's is going to be the house, all right? now. Our fundraiser is going to be mixed with other things, okay? Uh, raffles, 50-50s, right? That's a good one. Now, a 50-50 is where you sell the raffle tickets, right? And half of the proceeds go to the charity and the other half go to the winner. Now, normally, the 50-50, right, you can get the winner to donate half the money right back to the parish. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I'm particularly good at making this happen. Here's what I do. I make them stand up. I make a real big deal out of them, right? And then I make them tell me how good the charity is. Then I ask them in front of everybody if they would like to donate the money back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and most of the time they do it, you know. Oh, yeah, you can double the money on the 50-50 if you guilt the winner enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this outfit does half the work, all right? When you're gambling, think of it like this. Just think of it as like you're playing bingo. Okay? It's a random chance if you win. Random numbers. All right. Now, is it God's will if you win or lose? Well, everything's God's will and nothing's God's will. That's the thing. You know, God wants it to go a certain way, but he does not micromanage. All right? He doesn't sit in the back of the bingo hall, girls, go, and go, I think Miss Smith should win today. It doesn't work like that. All right? He invented bingo. He gave everybody the opportunity... <laughs> to learn and play bingo. He does not micromanage bingo, all right? He doesn't micromanage the world, so he's not gonna micromanage bingo at St. Bruno's. He doesn't send the tsunamis, he doesn't send the floods, he doesn't make the volcanoes erupt. He sets it up so that it might happen, and if it does, good luck to you, all right? <laughs> And I'm not going to stand here today and get in a big fist fight over global warming, all right? Because God gave us the power to cause the global warming, which we cause. That's all I'm saying, you know? I personally think God has a tendency to pay way more attention to Miss Smith over there, whose husband's in pain or agony from whatever disease he's suffering from, than worrying about that lady over there because she's praying a win at bingo. And you know what? Sometimes, class, the answer to your prayers is no. All right? But I still, I, I got him to show me one of his tricks. Would you like to see it? Yes? yes? Would you like to see it? Yes. He gave me a piece of his magic rope, and I've been working on it. Here we go. Look at this. See this? It looks like just a regular rope. All right, now what Phil told me to do was to just tie a regular knot in it, just like that. Okay, perfect. Oh, no, that's not what we were supposed to do. All right, that's all right. We'll just cut it, just like this. We'll just put a little cut in the rope, just like that. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, let's see. Oh, no, that's not what Phil told me to do. Now we have a note in it. You know, we'll just wrap it up like this. We'll just wrap it up, and then we'll just do a little magic thing like this. We'll use the ruler. It's almost as good as a magic wand. I can make anybody do anything with this thing, right? <laughs> we'll just wave it over, tap, tap. Ta-da! Look at that! 
that. And I'll tell you, when you go into a casino dressed in a habit, it's very disruptive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> very disruptive. One time I was at an educators' conference in the Stratosphere Hotel, actually, in a banquet hall right off the casino floor, and I stepped out and walked straight through. It was jarring for everyone in there to see a nun on the casino floor, you know? And I could tell right away that people were starting to feel guilty and bad and panicky. I could tell just by looking at them. And a guy actually ran up to me and asked me to pray for him. <laughs> All right, now, are you a lawyer, buddy? Yes. All right, are you concerned about being in purgatory? Are you concerned about going to purgatory? Well, then there's things you can do about that, you know? Indulgences, you can go to Mass every first Friday during Lent. You can earn credits in the big book. You've... <laughs> You've heard about the book, right? There, there's a book, sir. Here It goes like this. Everybody's in the book. The Lutherans, the Presbyterians, the Jewish people, everybody. As soon as you're born, goosh, your name goes in the book, okay? <laughs> and there's two columns in the book, a credit and a debit, all right? <laughs> okay, your credits are the good things you do, you know? Uh, your debits are the bad things you do. Putting on lipstick, drinking water, <laughs> asking inappropriate questions. <laughs> Okay, and then when we pass away, uh, we go to heaven and they open up the big book and they look at it. And if your credits and debits weigh out, you get to go to heaven, okay? If your credits are better than your debits, you get to go to, you get to, go to heaven. If your debits outweigh the credits, where do you think you go? Purgatory. We don't like, as Catholics, to say that anybody's going to go to hell, all right? Uh, some of people will, but we don't like to say it out loud. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now... Well, who do you think keeps track of that book, buddy? Who, who do you think keeps track of that book, class? St. Peter? Oh, he's way too busy. Dead Catholic accountants. We're going to give him another chance because we like him, Vienna. All right, now. After losing $100 in the casino, a good Catholic should, A, Pray to St. Cayetano to help him avoid losing too much more. B, pray to St. Bernardin to give him strength to leave the casino. Or C, pray that he's not over an available balance at the ATM machine. <laughs> B is right, buddy. Okay, what will you choose, box number three or box number one? Three. three. Show him what he wants. Oh, you won the Lenten special. It's a can of tuna and mayonnaise.